Xavier Trout had spent years crafting his reputation as a premier wildlife documentarian, and his latest project brought him deep into the heart of Kilpora National Park, Uganda. With a dedicated camera crew in tow, he embarked on a mission to capture the intricate behavior of cheetahs in their natural habitat. As the golden African sun cast long shadows across the savanna, Xavier's team trailed behind a group of cheetahs, their lenses trained on the sleek felines. The day was scorching, the air heavy with the scent of dry grass and distant acacias. At 48 years old, Xavier moved with seasoned grace, his steps silent and deliberate as he kept a respectful distance from the cheetahs. His knowledge of these magnificent creatures was encyclopedic, built on years of dedicated research. With each cautious step, his camera rolled, capturing every nuance of their behavior. The cheetahs moved gracefully, their slender bodies gliding through the grass. Xavier and his crew felt a surge of excitement as they watched the cheetah's interaction, recording every fleeting moment. But then, something unexpected happened. In a heartbeat, one of the cheetahs broke away from the group, its amber eyes locking onto Xavier with a mix of curiosity and wariness. Xavier's heart raced as he tried to maintain his composure, knowing that the situation had taken a potentially dangerous turn. Time seemed to slow as Xavier assessed the situation. He knew that sudden movements or loud noises could provoke the cheetah and turn the encounter dangerous. With a reassuring hand gesture, Xavier signaled his crew to stop moving. He knew that their collective composure was paramount in this critical moment. As the cheetah approached, Xavier maintained his steady gaze, exuding an air of calm authority. The cheetah circled the group, its every muscle tensed as it assessed them for any potential threat. Xavier's heart pounded, but his years of experience prepared him for this scenario. He remembered the importance of avoiding direct eye contact, a gesture that could be perceived as a challenge. Instead, he maintained a respectful downward gaze, acknowledging the cheetah's dominance. The tension in the air was palpable as the cheetah inched closer. Xavier could hear his crew members breathing shallowly, their cameras trained on the unfolding drama. It was then that the unexpected occurred, shattering the eerie stillness. The cheetah brushed against one of the camera stands with a sudden swift movement. The impact sent shockwaves through the equipment, and one of the cameras crashed to the ground, its lens shattering on impact. The crew held their breath, praying that this unforeseen disruption wouldn't escalate the situation. The once hushed moment was now fraught with tension. The crew's wide-eyed gazes focused on Xavier as he maintained his calm and composure, ready to adapt to whatever came next in their remarkable encounter with the cheetah. Despite the loud crash, Xavier remained composed. He knew that panic and noise would only agitate the already wary cheetah. He signaled to his crew to remain still, even as they watched the damaged camera helplessly. Now clearly startled by the fallen camera, the cheetah stepped back a few paces. Its ears twitched and its tail flicked nervously. Xavier maintained his non-aggression posture, sending calming signals through his body language. Minutes felt like hours as the cheetah weighed its options. The unforgiving sun bore down on them, intensifying the tension in the air. Xavier's mind raced, but his outward demeanor remained unwavering. He knew that every second counted, his heart pounding in rhythm with the slow passage of time. The cheetah's decisions were crucial, and Xavier's years of expertise kept him prepared for any scenario that might unfold in the sweltering African savanna. Finally, as if making a decision, the cheetah turned and gracefully retreated. It disappeared into the tall grass, leaving Xavier and his crew breathless but unharmed. The Kilpora National Park resumed its natural rhythm as if the encounter had never happened. As the adrenaline slowly subsided, Xavier and his team breathed a sigh of relief. Their hearts still raced, but they knew that this encounter had provided something unique, an unfiltered glimpse into the world of the cheetah. They continued their documentary work, this time with an even deeper appreciation for the creatures they were studying. Days turned into weeks, and the encounter with the cheetah became a defining moment in Xavier's documentary. It showcased not only the incredible beauty of the cheetah, but also the delicate balance between humans and the wild creatures they sought to understand. Years later, as Xavier looked back on his career, he couldn't help but smile at the memory of that heart-stopping encounter. It had been a reminder of the wild's unpredictability, but also of the power of knowledge and respect in forging a connection with nature. Ultimately, Xavier's documentary on cheetah behavior became a celebrated work, 
earning accolades for its authenticity and the unfiltered glimpse it offered into the world of these magnificent animals. And for Xavier Trout, it was a testament to the enduring lessons of the wild, a realm where knowledge, respect, and composure could mean the difference between life and death. The legendary Kruger National Park is the heart of Africa's untamed wilderness, a vast sanctuary painted in nature's vibrant hues. The landscape stretches as far as the eye can see, a tapestry of grassy plains, meandering rivers, and clusters of ancient trees. Towering acacias and rugged mountains punctuate the horizon, while the symphony of wildlife resonates throughout the park, a testament to its untamed allure. A renowned wildlife photographer, Emily Turner, embarks on a daring expedition into the depths of Kruger National Park. Her heart thrums with anticipation as she seeks the elusive and rare albino lion, a creature whispered about among hunters and wildlife enthusiasts. The park's wilderness is a vast canvas teeming with life. Graceful giraffes roam the open plains, their long necks reaching for the sky while herds of majestic elephants move with silent power. The thundering hooves of wildebeest echo through the air, harmonizing with the haunting calls of unseen birds. The atmosphere crackles with electric energy, hinting at the convergence of seen and unseen forces. Undeterred by the potential dangers lurking beneath the surface, Emily ventures deep into uncharted territory. The dense foliage shrouds her in a cloak of mystery, concealing both hidden dangers and untold wonders. Every step forward unravels a new facet of this untamed world, where survival is a delicate dance between predator and prey. Twilight descends, casting an ethereal glow upon the savanna. Emily's senses heighten as if being watched by unseen eyes. Shadows lengthen, merging into one another, whispering secrets she cannot decipher. A primal instinct tingled at the back of her mind, warning her of the impending danger lurking in the shadows. Through her camera lens, Emily glimpses the albino lion, a majestic creature with fur as white as moonlight, its eyes gleaming like precious ivory. Its rarity is evident, an embodiment of nature's secrets that have eluded capture for generations. Yet Emily remains oblivious to the creature's sinister desire to protect its realm from human intrusion. In an instant, the atmosphere transforms, charged with an eerie anticipation that sends a chill down Emily's spine. The air seems to hold its breath, as if nature itself braces for the imminent encounter that is about to unfold. Suddenly, breaking through the silence, a thunderous rustle erupts from the depths of the foliage. With a grace that belies its ferocity, the albino lion springs forth, a blur of ghostly white against the backdrop of the verdant wilderness. Its muscles ripple with power and force, propelling it forward into a display of raw, untamed energy. Time slows as Emily's eyes widen, her heart pounding in her chest, unable to comprehend the surreal tableau unfolding before her. The lion instantly closes the distance with an awe-inspiring speed, its immense presence overwhelming her senses. Its jaw snaps shut on Emily's shoulder with horrifying precision, the impact reverberating through her body like an electric shockwave. The searing pain intensifies with each passing second, her world transforming into a realm of excruciating torment. The lion's fangs sink deep into her flesh, puncturing the layers of skin and muscle while its powerful jaws exert a bone-crushing force. Agony courses through Emily's entire being, a symphony of pain that eclipses any previous experience. She can feel her body tremble in response, locked in the relentless grip of the predator's maw. As the lion's jaws clamp down on Emily's shoulder, an intense surge of survival instincts course through her veins. The excruciating pain fuels her ferocious determination to fight back and escape the clutches of the majestic beast. Adrenaline floods her system, heightening her senses and sharpening her focus. With every ounce of strength, Emily transforms her camera, once the tool for capturing beauty, into a weapon of desperation. The camera's weight becomes secondary to its newfound purpose as she swings it with all her might, 
delivering powerful blows to the lion's face. The lion, stunned by the unexpected resistance, roars in frustration and pain. Its once assured grip loosens slightly. Seizing the opportunity, Emily's quick thinking and resolute determination propelled her to take advantage of the temporary opening. A small glimmer of hope appeared in the distance, like a flickering flame, when a group of park rangers hurried to the place, attracted by the noise. They shouted loudly, and their weapons made a lot of noise, distracting the albino lion. This gave Emily a quick chance to escape from its tight grip. She stumbled away, blood seeping from her shoulder, leaving her beloved camera behind in all the confusion. Amidst the rumble of the park ranger's vehicles and the loud gunshots from their powerful rifles, the lion sensed its danger. It stopped attacking the poor photographer as the group of rangers arrived at the spot. The lion immediately backed away, leaving the woman injured and beaten. But the park rangers knew the predator had not completely disappeared as it roared angrily in the distance. Bloodied and shaken, Emily retreats to the safety of the park rangers, her wounded shoulder throbbing with every step. The lion's roar reverberates through the night, a haunting reminder of the peril she narrowly escaped. Nursed back to health, Emily discovers comfort in the embrace of her loved ones and the steadfast backing of the wildlife community. The scars etched upon her body become a badge of honor, symbols of her survival and resilience in the face of nature's primal fury. As Emily contemplates her distressing encounter, she acknowledges the deep wisdom intricately woven within her ordeal's fabric. The secrets of the wild are not meant to be conquered and captured, but cherished from a respectful distance. Her photographs, frozen moments in time, cannot fully encapsulate the enigmatic nature of the albino lion. The true essence of the untamed can only be understood through the delicate balance between admiration and intrusion. Emily's story becomes a whispered tale of caution, reminding others of the price one must pay to unlock nature's enigmas. The untamed will always possess an allure that both beckons and repels, and in the shadows of its realm lies a reminder that some secrets are meant to remain hidden, forever elusive, and beyond the grasp of humanity. In 1990, a 29-year-old named Ayan began his journey in Tanzania as a dedicated safari guide. With 11 years of experience, he had mastered the art of guiding tourists through the country's breathtaking landscapes and wildlife. One fateful day, a group of researchers with a profound interest in the animals and history of the Tanzanian forest hired Ayan for a tour. Their project was dedicated to studying the fauna and delving into the deep-rooted history of the forest. They had heard of Ayan's reputation as an expert guide who could provide them with invaluable insights. After careful consideration, they decided upon the 24th of March as the date for their expedition, setting the rendezvous time at 9 a.m., when the morning sun bathed the forest in a soft golden light. The appointed day arrived, and Ayan was already at the meeting point, fully prepared to welcome the eager group and guide them through the carefully selected locations. As the clock struck 9 a.m., the researchers arrived punctually, their faces adorned with excitement and curiosity. Ayan led them on a journey to start the day, which had a sense of adventure in the air. They ventured into the heart of the forest, each step taking them deeper into the wilderness. Ayan shared his extensive knowledge, and the group members, both boys and girls, listened with rapt attention. The girls marveled at the breathtaking beauty of the surroundings, while the boys diligently jotted down every piece of information and captured the mesmerizing landscapes on video. The group followed Ayan's lead, their trust in his expertise unwavering. Ayan's connection with nature was palpable, and his profound understanding of the environment was evident in how he spoke about it. It was clear that he was in his element. After some time, they reached a spot in the forest where they could observe the activities of the local animals. The excitement reached its peak as they witnessed the animals in their natural habitat, their behaviors and interactions providing valuable insights for the researchers. The group documented these activities with cameras and notes, ensuring that they had a comprehensive record of their findings. As they settled down to review their observations, an unexpected turn of events left everyone in shock. 
Ion had taken a few steps back, providing some space for the group, when a powerful and imposing black rhinoceros suddenly appeared on the scene. The rhino, a magnificent but dangerous creature, had approached with a purpose, its massive frame casting an intimidating shadow. In a horrifying moment, the rhino attacked. With a swift and powerful kick, it struck Ayan, sending him flying to the ground. The impact was devastating, leaving Ayan badly injured and in excruciating pain. The group watched in helpless terror as the rhino stood menacingly over Ayan. Fear and panic seized the group, and they made a frantic retreat to a safer distance. They immediately contacted the forest authorities for help, realizing that Ayan's life was in grave danger. The forest rangers swiftly responded, arriving on the scene to confront the dangerous rhino and provide emergency assistance to Ayan. The situation was dire, and Ayan's injuries were severe. He was promptly transported to a hospital, where a team of dedicated doctors worked tirelessly to stabilize his condition. Despite their best efforts, Ayan had lost a significant amount of blood and suffered internal injuries. His life hung in the balance. Tragically, Ayan's battle for survival ended in heartbreak. The news of the beloved safari guide's demise spread like wildfire, leaving his family, friends, and the entire community in mourning. It was a cruel and painful reminder of the risks faced by those who dedicated their lives to exploring and protecting the natural world. The loss of Ayan's son and brother in particular had a significant impact on their family. The memory of that fateful day haunted them, and they could never truly forget the horrific attack that had taken him from them. The people who had the privilege of knowing Ayan mourned the loss of a remarkable young man whose passion for nature knew no bounds. The story of Ayan's untimely death reverberated through the media, shining a spotlight on the dangers that lurked in the wild, even for those who possessed extensive knowledge and experience. Under the dazzling lights of the Grand Circus Tent, a captivating performance was about to unfold. The crowd hummed with anticipation, their eyes fixated on center stage where the renowned lion tamer Sebastian prepared to tame the magnificent beast. The scent of popcorn and cotton candy wafted through the air, adding to the enchanting atmosphere. Among the multitude of spectators were two wide-eyed girls, Sophia and Olivia. Their hearts raced with excitement as they clutched their cotton candy tightly their young minds filled with wonder and awe. This was their first visit to the circus, and they had heard tales of the daring lion show that had left audiences breathless. The spotlight illuminated the massive cage, revealing the golden eyes of the majestic lions within. The drum roll began, sending a shiver of anticipation down the spines of every spectator. Sophia and Olivia leaned forward in their seats, their eyes filled with anticipation as the curtain slowly drew open, unveiling the fearless lion tamer who stood before the fierce beasts. The air crackled with anticipation as the crowd huddled around the majestic arena, eyes fixated on the looming steel cage at its center. The lion show had always been a spectacle, a symphony of grace and obedience, but today was different. However, the trainer didn't know the cage door is not locked perfectly, and later it will put so many lives in danger. As the trainer stepped into the ring, his once confident demeanor seemed a bit shaken. He cracked his whip and barked commands, but the magnificent lion, with his golden mane and piercing eyes, stared back with an unsettling glint. A hushed murmur spread through the audience as the beast refused to perform its usual routines. Then, in a sudden burst of untamed fury, the lion roared ferociously and lunged from the cage door toward his trainer, claws slashing through the air. Panic seized the spectators, and gasps of disbelief echoed through the stands. The once majestic creature now revealed its wild instincts, disregarding all human control. Fear swept through the audience like wildfire, and some frantically sought the exits, Others, frozen with awe and terror, watched the deadly dance between man and beast unfold. Panic ensued as the majestic lion burst from his cage furiously and collapsed with his trainer, leaving him injured on the circus stage, eyes blazing with a primal hunger. Screams erupted like a chorus of sirens as people scrambled for safety, 
trampling over one another in their desperate bid to escape. But the lion was relentless, its powerful muscles propelling it through the chaos with terrifying speed. It closed in on its targets, Sophia and Olivia, who were frozen in fear, their eyes locked with the fierce predator. Time stood still as the world narrowed down to a split-second decision. Sophia's instincts surged forth, and with a surge of adrenaline, she grabbed Olivia's arm, her voice a desperate whisper. Run! With their lives hanging in the balance, they mustered every ounce of courage. They darted towards the only escape route, their hearts pounding in unison. In that moment, survival was their sole focus, their connection forged through fear and determination. Sophia and Olivia's hearts pounded in their chest as they stared into the fierce, predatory eyes of the lion. Its jaws snapped shut with a thunderous force, just inches away from their trembling bodies. The sound echoed through the air, evoking a chilling sense of danger that paralyzed them momentarily. Their eyes widened in terror as they realized how narrowly they had escaped the razor-sharp teeth that could have easily torn their flesh apart. Sophia's adrenaline-fueled escape came at a high cost. As she glanced down at her trembling arms and legs, she gasped in horror at the deep lacerations inflicted by the lion's claws. Blood dripped from the wounds, staining her clothes crimson. Each gash was a painful reminder of the raw power that the ferocious predator possessed. Olivia, on the other hand, was not as fortunate. The lion's attack had left her with a severe bite wound on her shoulder the sharp teeth sinking deep into her flesh. The pain was excruciating, radiating through her body with every beat of her heart. Bruises adorned her body, souvenirs from the brute force with which she had been thrown to the ground. As the lion lunged forward, teeth bared and claws poised, it seemed like all hope was lost for Sophia and Olivia. But amidst the chaos, the trainer quickly got up, despite his injuries, thinking intelligently, with years of experience kicking in. With a firm voice and a commanding presence, he issued a series of commands, his body language exuding authority. Miraculously, the lion halted in his tracks, the lion's fierce gaze transforming into a submissive stare. And the trainer was finally able to control and successfully put the lion back in the cage. The crowd held their breath as the girls were safely pulled away from the jaws of danger. The circus staff sprang into action, their training and instincts kicking in as they rushed to attend to the injured girls. Emergency services were immediately summoned, their sirens piercing through the stillness of the night. Paramedics arrived swiftly, their faces a mix of determination and concern as they skillfully assessed the extent of the damage. Stretchers were brought forth, gently carrying Sophia and Olivia away from the scene of horror. Their injured bodies, a painful reminder of the cruelty they had endured. The incident raised troubling legal and ethical questions regarding safety measures at the circus. Critics argued that the attack was a result of inadequate protocols and insufficient training for both the animals and the trainers. Calls for stricter regulations and increased scrutiny of circus practices grew louder, demanding better protection for both performers and spectators. Kishpur Wanjala was a dedicated cheetah preservationist, passionate about Africa's elusive and graceful big cats. He had devoted his life to understanding and protecting these magnificent creatures. His latest project took him deep into the heart of the Mozami complex within the Savo ecosystem a sprawling wilderness that spanned the boundary between Mozambique and Kenya. For months, Kishpur had been meticulously tracking a group of cheetahs, selected for a groundbreaking project aimed at reintroducing these endangered cats to their natural habitat. The cheetahs had been carefully raised in captivity, and now it was time for them to return to the wild. Kishpur's role was to observe and document their behavior, ensuring they could successfully adapt to their new environment. The Mozami complex was a vast expanse of rugged terrain characterized by sweeping grasslands and acacia trees that seemed to stretch endlessly. Kishpur and his team of field researchers had become intimately familiar with the daily routines and movements of the cheetahs they were studying. They often spent long hours in the field using high-powered binoculars to observe the cheetahs from a safe distance. One day, as Kishpur and his team trailed the group of cheetahs, 
An air of excitement permeated the scene. They had been allowed to tag one of the cheetahs with a tracking collar. This collar would provide invaluable data on the animal's movements, allowing them to monitor its behavior and ensure its well-being during the crucial reintroduction phase. As they carefully closed the distance between themselves and the cheetahs, Kishpur felt a mixture of anticipation and nervous energy. The success of their project hinged on their ability to minimize human interference while ensuring the safety of both the cheetahs and their team. Every step closer brought them nearer to their research goal, but heightened the tension of the encounter. Kishpur knew that achieving the delicate balance between observation and intrusion was paramount, emphasizing the importance of respecting the wild instincts of these remarkable creatures. Kishpur's heart raced as he approached the selected cheetah, a young male with a sleek golden coat. He knew that this was a critical moment, one that required precision and caution. He prepared the tranquilizer dart with practiced hands, hoping to administer it from a safe distance. However, nature often had its plans, and in the blink of an eye, everything changed. Sensing the intrusion, the cheetah suddenly sprang to its feet, its amber eyes locking onto Kishpur. The distance that had seemed sufficient just moments ago now felt dangerously close. Fear and adrenaline coursed through Kishpur, as the cheetah let out a warning growl, its sleek body coiled like a tightly wound spring. In that instant, he knew that he had misjudged the situation. The tranquilizer dart would not reach the cheetah in time, and the animal's instincts had taken over. Without warning, the cheetah launched at Kishpur, its claws unsheathed and jaws agape. Kishpur's heart pounded in his chest as he instinctively raised his arms to shield his face. The impact of the attack was swift and brutal and he felt the searing pain of the cheetah's claws tearing through his clothing and into his flesh. Desperation fueled Kishpur's fight for survival. With a surge of strength and determination, he managed to reach for a nearby stick, the only weapon at his disposal. In a frantic struggle, he used the stick to fend off the relentless cheetah, striking it with all the force he could muster. The clash between man and beast was a terrifying testament to the raw power of nature. Kishpur's instincts and resourcefulness were his only allies as he grappled with the primal forces that had been unleashed in the heart of the African wilderness. The cheetah, surprised by Kishpur's fierce resistance, momentarily retreated. It was a brief respite, but it was enough for Kishpur to regain his footing and create some distance between himself and the wounded animal. Bloodied and battered, he knew that he had narrowly escaped a potentially fatal encounter. Kishpur's team rushed to his side, their expressions a mix of relief and concern. They helped him to safety and administered first aid for his injuries, which were not life-threatening. Kishpur bore the physical scars of the attack, but his spirit remained unbroken. His steadfast dedication to the preservation of cheetahs and his resilience in the face of adversity continued to drive his mission forward, ensuring that the lessons learned from this encounter would benefit humans and these magnificent creatures. In the aftermath of the harrowing incident, Kishpur and his team decided to temporarily abandon their plan to collar the cheetah. It was a sobering reminder of the unpredictability of wild animals, even when approached with the best intentions. As weeks turned into months, Kishpur continued his work with a newfound respect for the cheetahs he studied. He knew they were survivors in a harsh and unforgiving landscape, and he admired their resilience and adaptability. The initiative to return cheetahs to their natural environment went on though with more caution and respect for these beautiful animals' bounds. Kishpur's own experiences in the wild deepened his understanding of the delicate balance between humans and the animals they sought to protect. In the end, Kishpur's story was one of resilience and unwavering dedication to the cause of cheetah conservation. His scars served as a testament to the risks he had undertaken in pursuit of his passion, a flame that burned brighter than ever as he carried on his work in the vast and untamed Mozami complex. The challenges and triumphs he faced served as an inspiration to his colleagues and a reminder of the relentless efforts required to safeguard these magnificent creatures. Kishpur's unwavering commitment, even in the face of danger, fueled the hope that cheetahs would continue to thrive in their natural habitat, their existence forever intertwined with the indomitable spirit of those who fought to protect them. Lalita was a 45-year-old woman living in a quiet village in India. Her life was simple and filled with the joys of family and tradition. She had two lovely daughters, Rabia and Sonia, who brought endless happiness into her life. 
Their quaint home was always bustling with family gatherings and delicious home-cooked meals. One sunny afternoon, Lalita decided to organize a family gathering, a special occasion to bring everyone together. She, Rabia, and Sonia were out in the backyard, preparing a feast for their beloved relatives. The air was filled with the delicious aromas of spices and freshly prepared dishes, and the chatter of family members filled their ears. It was the perfect day for a family gathering. The three women worked harmoniously, chopping vegetables, stirring pots, and tending to a sizzling skillet filled with spicy, fragrant curry. They shared smiles and laughter as they created a delightful array of dishes that would soon grace the dining table. Lalita was the heart and soul of the family, and this was a day she had been looking forward to for a long time. As they stood around the makeshift outdoor kitchen, Lalita, Rabia, and Sonia enjoyed the warm breeze that rustled the trees. The golden sun painted the sky and everything felt serene, but in an instant the peacefulness of the day was shattered. Lalita, engrossed in her cooking, felt a strange sensation at her feet. She glanced down, thinking it was a harmless creature that had crossed her path like a curious squirrel or a lizard. However, her gaze fell upon a sight that sent shockwaves through her body. A cobra whose hood flared, its venomous fangs glistening in the sunlight, was coiled near her feet. Fear gripped her heart, and without thinking, she leaped back in alarm. Her sharp cry filled the air, startling Rabia and Sonia. The commotion attracted the attention of the rest of the family members, who rushed to the backyard to see what had happened. Lalita's initial instinct was to grab her slipper and toss it at the cobra in an attempt to drive it away. But the cobra, feeling cornered and threatened, hissed menacingly at Lalita. It raised its head high, poised to strike. Panic surged through Lalita, and the seconds felt like hours as she watched the cobra inch closer. Rabia and Sonia, who had witnessed the terrifying spectacle, were not about to stand idly by. They too grabbed their slippers and spatulas and began throwing them at the cobra. The makeshift weapons flew through the air, creating a chaotic scene as they tried to fend off the venomous intruder. The cobra, now facing attacks from multiple directions, was disoriented but remained dangerous. It lunged forward, striking Lalita. The world around her seemed to blur, and she fell to the ground in a desperate attempt to evade the serpent's fangs. Her heart raced and her screams pierced the air, a chorus of terror mixing with her daughter's cries. Lalita's brave daughters continued their assault, throwing everything they could find to keep the cobra at bay. The frantic, adrenaline-fueled moments felt like an eternity, but in reality it was just a matter of minutes. The cobra, sensing the fierce resistance, decided that it was time to retreat. It slithered away, its hood slowly collapsing, and it disappeared into the foliage. Lalita lay on the ground, trembling and shaking, while Rabia and Sonia, with their hearts pounding, rushed to her side. They knew they needed to act swiftly to save their beloved mother. Amid the chaos, the men of the family, who had heard the cries and commotion, rushed to the backyard. Upon seeing the pale and trembling Lalita on the ground, they realized the gravity of the situation. Without hesitation, they scooped her up and rushed her to the nearest hospital. The hospital was a beacon of hope in the midst of the family's distress. Lalita was quickly admitted, and the medical team sprang into action. They recognized the urgency of the situation and immediately administered antivenom to counteract the cobra's venom. As time passed and hours turned into an agonizing wait, the family could do nothing but hope for the best. The hours that followed were a test of patience and endurance. Lalita lay on the hospital bed, her face etched with pain and worry, while Rabia and Sonia sat by her side, their eyes never leaving her. The rest of the family gathered in the waiting area offered prayers and silent support, clinging to the hope that their beloved Lalita would pull through. The anti-venom began its work, gradually neutralizing the venom coursing through Lalita's veins. The medical team closely monitored her condition making sure that her body responded positively to the treatment. They knew that time was of the essence and every minute counted. As the hours turned into what felt like an eternity, Lalita's condition began to stabilize. The color returned to her face and her breathing steadied. Hope blossomed in the hearts of her family who couldn't wait to see her back on her feet. Finally, after a long and anxious wait, the doctors delivered the news the family had been yearning to hear. Lalita had turned a corner. The antivenom had successfully countered the cobra's venom, and her body was on the path to recovery. The collective sigh of relief that swept through the waiting room was palpable, a celebration of life and a victory against the forces of nature. 
Lalita remained in the hospital for several days as she regained her strength. She was surrounded by the unwavering support of her family, who took turns sitting by her side, sharing stories, laughter, and the comfort of each other's presence. It was a time of reflection, gratitude, and renewed appreciation for the preciousness of life. Lalita's daughters, Rabia and Sonia, were particularly moved by the experience. They had witnessed their mother's resilience and bravery, and the incident had deepened the bond they shared. As they watched Lalita recover, they realized the strength that resided within her, a strength that they now carried with them in their own hearts. The family gathering, which had been disrupted by the Cobra's unexpected intrusion, finally took place when Lalita returned home. It was a celebration of survival and togetherness. The aroma of the dishes they had prepared before the incident filled the air, and the family came together to share a meal that symbolized their resilience in the face of challenges. In 1999, a tragic story unfolded in the heart of India involving a young man named Tim Cook. Tim was a university student, a vibrant soul with an insatiable passion for the riverside paradise of Pimsi. He was known for his unwavering dedication to exploring the serene beauty of the riverside, a place where he felt the ultimate sense of freedom. Tim would often embark on solitary journeys to various spots along the river indulging in the picturesque landscapes and the tranquil embrace of nature. His love for Pincy was no secret, evident to his family and closest friends. Tim was in the university canteen that fateful day in 1999 with his lovely girlfriend and several close friends. The conversation drifted toward their upcoming summer vacation plans as they sat together. Being true to his passion, Tim pitched the idea of a riverfront excursion to Pincy. His friends and girlfriend, well aware of his deep attachment to the riverside, readily agreed to the proposition. They eagerly awaited the announcement of their university's holiday schedule, hoping for a break that would allow them to realize this dream. Finally, the day arrived when the university declared the much anticipated vacation period. The news was met with sheer excitement and jubilation by Tim and his friends. The date was set for July 21st, a perfect summer day to embark on their river adventure. Tim was overjoyed at the prospect of returning to his favorite place, and he quickly began preparing for the trip. He meticulously packed his pincy bag with all the essentials, including swimwear and other items they would need for a day by the river. He envisioned himself taking a refreshing dip in the river to beat the summer heat and relish the serenity of the surroundings. The long-anticipated day finally arrived, and the excitement was palpable. Tim and his friends gathered together, anticipation building as they set off for their river rendezvous in an open jeep. Tim took the wheel, and his girlfriend occupied the seat next to him. As they hit the road, their journey was punctuated with music, laughter, and the promise of a day filled with adventure and fun. The group's palpable excitement and the picturesque scenery along the drive to the riverside were both noticeable. As they neared their destination, the sight of the river shimmering in the summer sun left them in awe. Tim parked the Jeep and they began offloading their bags, looking for the perfect spot to enjoy their day. Together, they discussed and selected the ideal location, offering a breathtaking riverside view. With everything in place, the group set up their picnic area, laying out all the items they would need for a memorable day by the river. Tim, filled with anticipation, quickly changed into his swimwear. His friends and girlfriend understood the immense freedom and relaxation that being by the river brought him. They engaged in their activities, not realizing a shadow of danger lurked nearby. As Tim entered the river for a refreshing swim, he was blissfully unaware of the peril that was about to unfold. In the depths of the water, a menacing presence stirred. A dangerous crocodile had been drawn to the sound of the water and the activity by the riverside. Unbeknownst to Tim and his friends, the crocodile slowly made its way toward Tim's location. The horrifying moment arrived when Tim found himself face to face with the massive and menacing crocodile. Sensing something was amiss, his friends and girlfriend were quick to respond, racing toward the river. The shock that awaited them at the riverside was unimaginable. 
As they reached the water's edge, they were confronted with the horrifying sight of the colossal crocodile attacking Tim. Panic set in as they witnessed the relentless, brutal attack. The crocodile quickly overpowered Tim, tearing into him and causing blood to spatter into the river. In agonizing moments, Tim Cook lost his life to the ruthless jaws of the crocodile. The shock and horror of that day were too much to bear for his friends and girlfriend. The unthinkable tragedy unfolded before their eyes, leaving them in disbelief and profound grief. It was a nightmare they would never forget, a memory etched in their minds forever. Tim Cook's tragic demise sent shockwaves through his family, friends, and the university community. The anguish of his mother upon hearing the devastating news of, of her son's death was indescribable. She was immediately admitted to the hospital due to the overwhelming shock and grief. Tim Cook's tragic end was a somber reminder of the unpredictable and dangerous aspects of nature. It highlighted the importance of being vigilant and cautious when venturing into the wilderness, especially in regions where wildlife can pose a threat. His untimely death left a void in the hearts of his loved ones and served as a solemn cautionary tale for those who cherish the beauty of the great outdoors. In the history of Tanzania, there's a remarkable story of a young girl named Sana. At 23 years old, Sana hails from a middle-class family and is pursuing her education at a university in Tanzania. She possessed a deep passion for learning, but she also had the unique ambition of working as a safari guide to support her studies and, in turn, her family. Sana's life was a balance between her academic aspirations and her love for the wild, and this story unfolds the extraordinary journey she embarked upon. Sana's enthusiasm for her studies and a part-time job as a safari guide was the foundation upon which her life rested. The duality of her existence allowed her to find joy both in the pursuit of knowledge and in the wilderness of Tanzania, a land known for its stunning landscapes and abundant wildlife. Her desire to contribute to her family's financial well-being through her job as a safari guide was a testament to her dedication and love for her loved ones. One day, as the Tanzanian University was about to close for a break, Sana's closest group of friends approached her with a unique idea. They shared a dream of going on a tour with Sana through the captivating Tanzanian forests to witness her work as a safari guide. The plan was to experience the intricacies of her job, understand what it meant to be a safari guide, and share in her passion for the wilderness. The date chosen for this exciting adventure was February 21st, a Sunday, making it an ideal holiday for such an escapade. As the chosen day arrived, the excitement among Sana and her friends was palpable. They converged at a pre-selected location and picked Sana up from her home. Their journey commenced with music and laughter as they looked forward to a day of adventure and exploration. Sana, behind the wheel of the safari jeep, navigated them through the Tanzanian terrain, ultimately arriving at a pristine location within the forest. Once they reached the forest, their spirits soared. The group decided to traverse the area on foot, absorbing the natural beauty of the landscape. They followed in Sana's footsteps as she guided them to various points of interest, sharing her knowledge and enthusiasm about the fauna and flora surrounding them. During their walk, Sana and her friends had the opportunity to meet other safari guides and forest staff who were intimately familiar with the region. These encounters further enriched their understanding of the environment and the role of safari guides in preserving it. Sana's friends eagerly embraced the experiences as they realized the profound connection between the guides, the forest, and its inhabitants. Stops to take pictures of the breathtaking moments that broke up their exploration. However, it was during one such pause that an unexpected and perilous encounter transpired. Suddenly, a dangerous rhinoceros emerged from the forest, drawing near to the group. Panic rippled through the friends as they locked eyes with the massive and potentially deadly animal. In that heart-stopping moment, fear gripped their souls, and their eyes filled with tears at the sight of the approaching rhino. It was at this critical juncture that Sana exhibited remarkable bravery. She positioned herself in front of her friends, understanding the gravity of the situation. Sana knew that the rhino might be hungry or agitated, and she resolved to protect her friends, even at great personal risk. As the friends watched in awe and terror, 
the rhino charged forward, inflicting a severe injury on Sana's body. She fought valiantly to control the raging beast, doing everything she could to shield her friends from harm. Despite her efforts, the rhino's attack had dire consequences, leaving Sana in agonizing pain and seriously wounded. Desperate for help, her friends immediately called the park's emergency hotline, providing their exact location. In the wake of the attack, the rhino retreated into the depths of the forest, and the friends rushed to Sana's side, their hearts heavy with fear and concern. Within moments, forest staff arrived on the scene to assess the situation. Recognizing the severity of Sana's injuries, they swiftly called for medical assistance. Sana was carefully transported to a nearby hospital, where her friends anxiously awaited news of her condition. The atmosphere was thick with shock and despair as they grappled with the sudden turn of events. Upon her arrival at the hospital, doctors immediately began treating Sana's wounds. The extent of the damage was evident, and it became apparent that her leg had suffered a grievous injury, leaving her unable to walk. Despite their best efforts, the medical professionals delivered the somber news to Sana's family and friends that the rhino's attack had left a lasting impact on her mobility. The news weighed heavily on those who cared about Sana, and the journey ahead appeared fraught with challenges and uncertainties. In conclusion, Sana's journey is a testament to the unique blend of courage, love for nature, and devotion to her loved ones that define her character. Her story highlights the profound connection between humanity and the wild. It serves as a reminder of the ongoing efforts needed to protect and conserve the incredible natural heritage of Tanzania. In the sprawling expanse of the Serengeti in Zimbabwe, Chipo diligently tended to his flock of sheep, vigilant in his efforts to safeguard them from the ever-present threat of wild predators. Born and bred amidst the untamed beauty of the Serengeti Plains, Chipo understood the perils that permeated this desert landscape. The Serengeti, a realm of awe-inspiring magnificence, stretched out before him in all its grandeur. Vast grasslands painted with hues of gold and green seemed to merge seamlessly with the horizon, extending as far as the eye could see. The air carried a distinct aroma, a mingling of earthly scents and the subtle sweetness of wildflowers, creating an intoxicating tapestry of fragrances. Scattered acacia trees punctuated the vastness, their gnarled branches reaching skyward like ancient sentinels. Their sparse foliage provided shelter for various creatures, from the majestic lions that ruled these lands to the graceful giraffes that traversed the plains. The melodious chirping of birds added a symphony of sound, harmonizing with the distant rustle of grass and the rhythmic thump of hooves. However, amidst this breathtaking panorama of nature's splendor, dangers lurked in every shadow. The Serengeti harbored a formidable cast of predators, each finely tuned to survive and thrive in this harsh environment. From the stealthy prowess of the leopards to the relentless pursuit of cheetahs, the Serengeti's inhabitants were locked in an intricate dance of predator and prey. Chapeau, with the innate wisdom passed down through generations, knew the significance of his role as guardian of the flock his weathered hands skillfully grasped the staff that served as his protectorate, ready to ward off any threat that dared encroach upon his precious sheep. As the night settled over the Serengeti and Chapeau prepared to seek respite, a restless commotion erupted among his flock of sheep. His experienced ears recognized the telltale signs of an impending threat, a predator closing in on his vulnerable herd. With unwavering determination and his trusted rifle in hand, Chapeau swiftly made his way toward the distressed animals. Each step carried a weight of responsibility, for he alone stood as the guardian of these gentle creatures in the face of danger. As he neared the trembling flock, a resounding shot broke the silence, echoing through the night air. The blast startled the sheep and the lurking pack of hyenas that had set their sights on an easy meal. The sudden eruption of chaos engulfed the scene as the sheep scattered in a panicked frenzy and the hyenas, momentarily disoriented, hesitated before recalibrating their predatory instincts. Unbeknownst to Chipo, the hyenas had recognized him as the primary threat. 
their hungry eyes fixated upon him, gleaming with a sinister hunger. They commenced a calculated dance, encircling the farmer with cautious steps, their eerie laughter permeating the stillness of the night. Chapeau's heart quickened, for he understood the gravity of his predicament. Fumbling to regain control, he aimed his rifle toward the encroaching hyenas, attempting to ward off the imminent danger. But fate had a different plan, and his shots missed their mark, leaving him vulnerable in the face of this cunning and relentless pack. In an unexpected twist of events, a hyena launched itself at Chapo from behind, catching him completely off guard. The force of the attack sent him stumbling forward, struggling to maintain his balance amidst the chaos around him. The pack of hyenas, driven by primal instinct, seized this moment to sink their teeth and claws into Chapo's vulnerable form. Like ravenous dogs, they tore into his arms, legs, and face, inflicting excruciating pain upon him. The sensation of their sharp fangs and razor-sharp claws tearing through his flesh was unbearable. With a calculated ferocity, the hyenas unleashed a relentless onslaught upon Chapo their coordinated assault akin to a well-rehearsed symphony of destruction. They took turns ravaging different parts of his body, stripping away the layers of his flesh, yet Chapo refused to release his grip on his rifle, a steadfast symbol of his resilience. Amidst the frenzy, Chapo remained steadfast, biding his time with unwavering determination. He understood that to survive, he needed to protect his most vulnerable spots, the windows to his soul, his eyes, and the delicate curve of his neck. As the hyenas momentarily regrouped, preparing for their next wave of attack, Chapo seized the opportunity. In a matter of seconds, the perfect moment materialized before him. Opening his eyes with a steely resolve, he steadied his aim, directing his rifle towards one of the rabid creatures. The deafening silence enveloped him, the weight of survival hanging in the balance, as he prepared to unleash a counter-strike that would tip the scales of this harrowing battle. A resounding blast reverberated through the expansive plains of the Serengeti, shattering the air with a forceful echo. It marked the swift demise of one of the hyenas, poised to launch another assault. The injured predator emitted a whimper its strength faltering as it crumpled to the ground, defeated. The remaining hyenas, driven by their instinctual unity, momentarily faltered, their collective minds grappling with the sudden events. Their predatory instincts urged them to press forward to resume their assault. Yet an unyielding determination emanated from Chapo, his gaze unflinching. Before the pack could orchestrate another attack, the piercing echo of Chapo's rifle resonated once more across the vast expanse. This time, the alpha female, the pack's leader, bore the brunt of the bullet's impact. She emitted a pitiful whimper, her formidable presence succumbing to the unyielding force of Chapo's resolve. Her body followed suit, collapsing onto the arid desert floor, a testament to the farmer's unwavering resilience. The retreat of the remaining hyenas swiftly followed, their collective retreat a testament to the dominance of survival. As their once brazen steps now faltered, they begrudgingly acknowledged their defeat. The echoes of their fading cries harmonized with the whispering winds, carrying away their hunger-filled desires. At the same time, Chapeau stood amidst the aftermath of his battle, a testament to his unwavering strength and courage. With the hyenas vanishing in the distance, Chapo's trembling body gave in to exhaustion. Collapsing onto the rugged terrain, he winced as the pain surged through his battered form. His flesh bore the raw evidence of the harrowing encounter, but profound gratitude enveloped him amidst the agony. He had survived. Chapo called out to his steadfast companions, summoning his dwindling strength who swiftly rushed to his aid. They tended to his wounds with tender care, their skilled hands meticulously cleansing and bandaging the torn flesh. Aware of the urgency, they orchestrated a swift rescue operation, 
carefully carrying Chipo towards the sanctuary of the nearest hospital, where he would receive the specialized care required for his recovery. Musa Kiprop was a dedicated medical specialist at the Panara workstation, nestled deep within the vast expanse of the Safari Ridge Reserve in Kenya. His days were spent tending to the injuries and ailments of the diverse wildlife that called this pristine wilderness home. With the sun rising over the savanna, Musa was prepared for another day of challenges, but nothing could have prepared him for the call that would change his life. It was a crisp morning when Musa received an urgent call on the reserve's radio. The voice on the other end was filled with urgency, describing a dire situation. A cheetah, one of the reserve's most prized inhabitants, had fallen victim to poachers. The criminals managed to escape, leaving the majestic feline grievously injured and struggling to survive. Without hesitation, Musa gathered his medical supplies and summoned his team. Time was of the essence, and they had to act swiftly to save the cheetah's life. As they rushed to the location described in the distress call, the rugged terrain of the Safari Ridge Reserve passed by in a blur, the stark beauty of the African wilderness surrounding them. The rolling grassland stretched out endlessly, punctuated by the distant silhouette of acacia trees. The urgency of their mission was underscored by the relentless African sun beating down upon them, a reminder that nature's clock was unforgiving, especially when life hung in the balance. When Musa and his peers arrived, they were greeted by a depressing sight. The cheetah lay on the ground, her once sleek coat now matted with blood and dirt. Her labored breaths spoke of the agony she endured. Musa's heart sank as he assessed the severity of her injuries and his determination to save her intensified. Approaching the injured cheetah cautiously, Musa could see the pain and anguish in her eyes. She was trapped in a cycle of suffering and Musa was her only hope. With gentle hands and a soothing voice, Musa began his examination, acutely aware of the danger that lurked beneath the surface of this wounded predator. As Musa reached out to assess the extent of the cheetah's injuries, her instincts, clouded by pain and fear, took over. In a split second, she lunged at Musa, her claws slashing through the air. It happened so fast that Musa had little time to react. The cheetah's claws found their mark, and Musa felt a searing pain across his face. Blood welled up from deep scratches, and his vision blurred momentarily. Instinctively, he stumbled backward, his hand clutching his wounded face. The cheetah's attack had been swift and vicious, driven by the primal urge to protect herself. Musa's team sprang into action, using every resource at their disposal to subdue the wounded cheetah without causing her further harm. They managed to immobilize her, allowing Musa to regain his composure and assess his injuries. His face was a canvas of deep scratches, and his left eye bore the brunt of the attack. He was in pain, but knew the cheetah needed immediate attention. With a determined spirit, he directed his team in administering first aid to the injured predator. While the cheetah was stabilized, Musa's injuries required urgent medical attention. He was transported to the nearest hospital, his face bandaged and his vision impaired. The following hours were a blur of pain and uncertainty as he underwent surgery to repair the damage inflicted by the cheetah's claws. The road to recovery was long and arduous for Musa. He faced physical and emotional challenges as he grappled with the scars that now marked his face. But his dedication to wildlife and resilient spirit kept him moving forward. Back at the Safari Ridge National Reserve, the injured cheetah made a slow but steady recovery under the watchful care of Musa's team. The poaching incident had shattered her trust in humans, but Musa's actions had given her a second chance at life. Months passed, and Musa and the cheetah continued their healing journeys. Musa's scars became a witness to his unyielding commitment to the animals he served. He knew the wild was a place of beauty and danger, where compassion and courage were essential traits. The story of Musa and the cheetah served as a reminder of the complex relationship between humans and wildlife and the profound impact that one person's dedication could have on the survival of a species. There lived a devoted mother near a national park in Thailand named Phan and her precious four-year-old son, Phet. Their life was simple and content, surrounded by the natural beauty that Thailand had to offer. The national park nearby was their haven, where the young boy could run freely and they could enjoy countless hours together, basking in the beauty of the great outdoors. One sunny morning, with the scent of blooming orchids in the air and the chatter of wildlife all around, 
Fawn and Fett made their way to a delightful playground near the woods within the national park. As they walked hand in hand, a sense of tranquility and serenity washed over them. Fawn's heart swelled with love for her young son, whose eyes sparkled with innocent wonder. The playground was a vibrant haven for children, with swings swaying in the breeze, colorful slides, and a jungle gym that stood tall, beckoning kids to climb. Fawn watched Fett eagerly join the other children, his laughter echoing through the air as he darted around the playground, finding joy in every corner. Fawn leaned against a nearby tree, a loving smile on her face as she watched her son play. She reveled in the simple pleasures of life, enjoying the sight of her son's happiness. The day seemed idyllic until an unexpected and terrifying event unfolded. Suddenly, Fett's gleeful laughter turned into anguished cries. Fawn's heart raced, and her maternal instincts kicked in immediately. She rushed toward the commotion, her eyes darting around in search of her son. Panic set in as she finally located him, trembling in a corner, his small hand trembling as he pointed at a menacing figure before him. It was a cobra. Its hood flared and eyes fixed on the little boy. The venomous snake hissed menacingly, its fangs glistening with deadly intent. Fear gripped Fawn's heart as she realized the gravity of the situation. Without hesitation, she snatched Fett up into her arms, shielding him from the threat that slithered dangerously close. The cobra's relentless hissing and swaying movement intensified Fett's terror. Fawn's mind raced, her maternal instincts screaming for her to protect her child. She had to act quickly, but she had no weapon or means to defend herself and her son against the deadly serpent. Desperation overcame her, and with trembling hands, Fawn searched the ground for anything she could use to fend off the cobra. Her eyes settled on a pile of stones near the edge of the playground, and she knew it was her only chance to ward off the snake. With Fett clutched tightly to her chest, Fawn grabbed a handful of stones and began throwing them at the cobra. She hoped to drive it away to create a barrier between the venomous serpent and her beloved son. But instead of retreating, the cobra's aggression intensified, its deadly intent unwavering. As Fawn's heart raced and beads of sweat formed on her forehead, she continued to hurl stones at the relentless cobra. She knew that the risk was great, but she couldn't bear the thought of harm coming to Fett. With each throw, she was simultaneously protecting and placing herself in harm's way. In a cruel twist of fate, as Fawn's desperate efforts continued, the cobra lunged with astonishing speed, sinking its venomous fangs into her exposed ankle. The searing pain shot through her body, and she let out a blood-curdling scream. Her grip on Fett faltered, and the boy, now sobbing in fear, clung to his mother with all his might. In the chaos of the moment, parkgoers who had been enjoying the serene surroundings of the National Park rushed to the scene, their collective gasps of horror filling the air. Among them was Amon Sack, a seasoned park ranger who had witnessed the ordeal from a distance. Amon Sack had a reputation as a quick-thinking and resourceful ranger, and he had seen his share of dangerous wildlife encounters. Amon Sack sprang into action, his years of training guiding his every move. He swiftly approached Fawn and Fett, assessing the situation with a calm demeanor that contrasted starkly with the panic that had taken hold of the onlookers. He could see the snake retreating into the underbrush after its attack, but the immediate concern was Fawn's life. Without hesitation, Amonsak instructed those gathered to step back and give him space. His experience and knowledge told him that Fawn had been bitten by a venomous cobra, and swift action was critical to her survival. Gently but with determination, he lifted Fawn into his arms, cradling her as he carefully carried her to his park ranger vehicle. Fett clung to his mother, tears streaming down his face as he witnessed the unfolding ordeal. Amon Sack assured the boy that his mother would be all right and he would make sure of it. With Fawn now in the ranger vehicle, Amon Sack radioed for immediate medical assistance. The closest hospital was a good distance away, but every second counted. He sped through the winding roads of the National Park, his eyes focused on the road, his thoughts with Fawn and Fett in the back seat. Upon arrival at the hospital, medical professionals were waiting, prepared to treat Fawn for the venomous snake bite. They immediately administered anti-venom, working quickly and efficiently to counteract the venom's deadly effects. Fawn was in excruciating pain, but her determination to survive for Fett's sake was unwavering. Hours passed as the medical team monitored Fawn's condition closely. The anti-venom combined with her sheer will to live began to show promising results. The worst of the venom's effects were gradually reversed and Fawn's condition stabilized. Fett, with his teary eyes, 
clung to his mother's side throughout the ordeal. The bond between them was unbreakable, and Fawn's strength and resilience were a testament to the power of a mother's love. As days turned into weeks, Fawn continued her recovery at the hospital. The initial fear and uncertainty had gradually given way to hope and healing. Her ankle, once swollen and blackened, was slowly regaining its natural color. The scars of the harrowing experience would always remain, but they were a testament to her bravery and her enduring love for her son. Meanwhile, back at the National Park, authorities launched an intensive search for the cobra that had attacked Fundra. Recognizing the danger it posed to park visitors, they were determined to ensure the safety of all who frequented the park. With the help of experienced wildlife experts, they combed the area, eventually locating the elusive serpent and capturing it. The cobra was carefully transported to a specialized wildlife facility, far from human habitation. The serpent would live out the rest of its days in the care of experts who could ensure its safety and the safety of others. Within the depths of the expansive Amazon rainforest, nestled in its verdant embrace, resides a vibrant tribe of approximately 1,000 individuals. For centuries, they have called this wilderness their home, their lives intricately intertwined with the ever-flowing currents of the majestic Amazon River. Amidst the teeming waters and untamed jungles, they have survived and thrived, their resilience a testament to their ancestral wisdom. Among the members of this resilient tribe is Chow, a 19-year-old man burdened with the responsibility of providing for his family in the unforgiving embrace of the jungle. With determination etched upon his face, he navigates the intricate maze of towering trees and dense undergrowth, mindful of the secrets within this treacherous terrain. Chow's daily routine centers on providing sustenance for his loved ones, a task he frequently achieves through fishing in the abundant waters of the Amazon. As the sun begins its ascent, casting dappled rays of light upon the glistening surface of the river, Chow readies his modest fishing equipment, brimming with hope and anticipation. As Chow pushed his riverboat away from his humble abode nestled beside the flowing river, he remained acutely aware of the hidden perils lurking beneath the murky depths. With each stroke of his paddle, caution coursed through his veins, a constant reminder of the dangers that lay in wait. After a brief journey, Chow arrived at his usual fishing spot, a location known to him like the lines on his weathered hands. Equipped with a sturdy stick fashioned into a makeshift fishing rod, he settled himself upon the wooden planks of his boat, ready to engage in the age-old dance between man and nature. In the serene embrace of the river, silence enveloped the surroundings, broken only by the soft lapping of water against the sides of Chow's boat. With an unwavering patience, he cast his line into the water, allowing the bait to sway with an enticing rhythm, an irresistible invitation to the river's residents. Time seemed to stretch in the moment's tranquility. The only companionship Chow sought was found in the gentle sway of his fishing rod. His senses sharpened, attuned to the slightest tremor or ripple upon the water's surface. A jarring disruption shattered the stillness, a resounding splash reverberating through the air. Chow's head snapped towards the origin of the sound, his gaze falling upon a colossal branch that floated upon the water its weight causing it to snap and plunge from the towering canopy above. Dismissing the incident as mere happenstance, a trick of nature's whimsy, Chow redirected his focus to the task at hand. With unwavering determination, he fixated his attention on the line, his senses honed for the telltale tug of a prospective catch. Unbeknownst to Chow, an insidious predator silently lurked beneath the river's surface. Unseen and unnoticed, it meticulously studied its unwitting prey, biding its time, relishing the anticipation of a forthcoming strike. In a heart-stopping instant, a colossal creature emerged from the depths, its presence shattering the tranquility of the river. Chow, caught off guard and defenseless, had no time to react as the behemoth closed in, its intentions set. 
With a terrifying display of strength, the creature swiftly ensnared Chow's vulnerable neck with an array of short, razor-sharp teeth and formidable jaws. The predator that attacked Chow revealed itself to be an enormous anaconda, measuring a staggering eight meters in length. Its sheer size and power were overwhelming, leaving Chow defenseless in the face of this relentless assault. The force of the attack sent shockwaves through the water, capsizing Chow's riverboat amidst the tumultuous chaos. Suddenly, Chow found himself submerged in the murky depths, his world reduced to a frantic struggle for survival. The anaconda's grip on his neck tightened, its relentless hold preventing him from retaliating. Helplessly, Chow grappled with his instincts, his mind urging him to fight back, but the predator's aquatic prowess surpassed his own, giving it the advantage in this watery battleground. Before long, the anaconda began its sinister maneuver, coiling itself around Chow's defenseless body. The excruciating pain radiated from his neck, but even more agonizing was the gradual crushing of his bones under the relentless embrace of the predator. Each bone-breaking squeeze constricted his lungs, leaving him gasping for precious air that seemed ever more elusive. The sound of his bones snapping and splintering reverberated in Chow's ears, a haunting symphony of his body's destruction. As he and the serpent sank deeper into the murky depths, darkness encroached upon his senses. A disorienting dizziness overcame him, and then, in a final chilling moment, the abyss claimed him, and Chow succumbed to the consuming darkness. The anaconda, sensing no resistance from its prey, moved on predatory instinct, its colossal jaws unhinging, expanding to accommodate the feast before it. Slowly and deliberately, the anaconda began its gruesome consumption, its muscular form undulating with each gulp. Chow, from head to body and then to his feet, was gradually enveloped by the gaping maw of the massive predator. With a chilling inevitability, his tenderized form became ensconced within the cavernous depths of the anaconda's stomach. Chow's fate was sealed within the confines of the serpent's digestive chamber. Three to five agonizing days would pass before the anaconda's powerful acids and relentless contractions fully dissolved and assimilated his remains. Meanwhile, his tragic family and concerned tribe desperately searched for their missing kin. As the days unfolded and their search persisted, the sad truth gradually settled upon the hearts of Chow's family and tribe. The Amazon River had once again claimed one of their own, and Chow's absence would forever be a poignant reminder of the fragile existence they faced within the untamed wilderness they called home. In the heart of South Africa's renowned Kruger National Park, an incident that sent shockwaves through the region unfolded. It was the year 2005 when the tranquil serenity of the park was shattered, leaving a lasting impact on the lives of those involved. Our story begins with Sarah Nlovu, a 28-year-old field biologist from the vibrant city of Johannesburg. Sarah was no stranger to the wilderness. She had spent years studying the behaviors and habitats of the park's diverse wildlife. Her love for nature and passion for conservation led her to pursue a career that allowed her to explore the untamed beauty of South Africa's national parks. Kruger National Park, stretching over 19,000 square kilometers of pristine wilderness, was renowned for its rich biodiversity and iconic African wildlife. It was home to the famous Big Five and boasted an elephant population of over 13,000 individuals, making it one of the most significant elephant habitats on the continent. However, as the park's popularity grew and tourist numbers swelled, so did the challenges of managing this delicate ecosystem. Human-elephant conflicts became increasingly frequent as elephants ventured closer to the park's fringes in search of food and water. On a fateful day in May 2005, Sarah was deep within Kruger National Park, accompanied by a small team of fellow biologists. Their mission was to observe and document the behavior of an elephant matriarch known as Naledi, Naledi's family group had been exhibiting intriguing social dynamics, capturing the attention of researchers eager to unravel the mysteries of elephant society. 
As the team meticulously observed Nalidi and her family from the safety of their research vehicle, they marveled at the majestic creatures. The matriarch's gentle yet commanding presence was a testament to the complexity of elephant communication and social bonds. Little did they know that this peaceful day would take a harrowing turn. A sudden rustling in the dense foliage nearby signaled the arrival of another group of elephants. Among them was a massive bull elephant known for his solitary and unpredictable nature. As Nalady's family group and the solitary bull converged, tensions escalated. Sarah and her team watched in trepidation as the elephants displayed dominance and territorial rivalry. The situation grew increasingly volatile, and the once harmonious scene transformed into a clash of titans. During this escalating confrontation, disaster struck. The solitary bull charged at Nalidi's family group with a loud trumpet, sending them into a frenzy. The research vehicle became a helpless witness to the unfolding tragedy amid the chaos. Despite their years of experience, Sarah and her team needed to prepare for the sheer force and aggression displayed by the bull elephant. In a matter of heart-wrenching seconds, the enraged behemoth upended the vehicle, leaving its occupants vulnerable and in mortal peril. The incident sent shockwaves through Kruger National Park, and the repercussions of that fateful encounter would leave an indelible mark on the lives of those who had dedicated themselves to the understanding and protection of Africa's magnificent elephants. As the research vehicle lay in ruins, overturned by the furious bull elephant, chaos reigned in the heart of Kruger National Park. Sarah and Lovu and her fellow biologists were in a dire predicament, their lives hanging in the balance as the colossal creature loomed over them. The bull elephant, driven by a potent mix of territorial aggression and heightened testosterone levels, continued to vent his rage at the mangled vehicle. The once sturdy steel frame had crumpled like paper, exposing the researchers to the wrath of one of nature's most formidable giants. Sarah and her team grappled with shock and fear inside the vehicle, their adrenaline-fueled instincts kicking in. Through the shattered windows, they could hear the agonized cries of the elephants locked in a brutal confrontation just meters away. The pungent scent of dust and crushed vegetation filled the air, adding to the surreal and terrifying atmosphere. Sarah, the team leader, knew that their chances of survival were dwindling with each passing moment. She attempted to establish contact with park authorities, desperately relaying their GPS coordinates and the gravity of the situation. They could only hope that help would arrive in time to prevent a tragedy of unimaginable proportions. Outside, the bull elephant's relentless assault showed no signs of abating. With each powerful thrust of his massive tusks, the remnants of the vehicle were further reduced to scrap metal. The researchers had no choice but to huddle together in the rapidly deteriorating shelter, shielded by whatever remained intact. Meanwhile, the park's rangers had received the distress call and were racing against the clock to reach the scene. They were well aware that tranquilizing an enraged elephant was a challenging endeavor, but the safety of the researchers was paramount. As minutes turned into agonizing hours, the park rangers finally arrived at the scene, armed with tranquilizer darts and a profound sense of urgency. Their arrival marked a crucial turning point in the harrowing ordeal, offering a glimmer of hope to the beleaguered researchers. With great precision and unwavering nerves, the rangers administered tranquilizer darts to the enraged bull elephant, gradually subduing his aggression. The colossal beast began to show signs of sedation, his once fierce temperament waning as the powerful drugs took effect. As the bull elephant's fury subsided, the rangers carefully extricated Sarah and her team from the wreckage of their vehicle. Bruised, shaken, and profoundly grateful for their rescue, they emerged from the ordeal physically scarred but alive. The incident would send shockwaves through Kruger National Park, prompting a re-evaluation of safety protocols for researchers and a deeper understanding of the challenges posed by the park's burgeoning elephant population. It was a stark reminder that the untamed wilderness held its perils even in pursuing knowledge and conservation, and that the line between fascination and danger could blur instantly. In the aftermath of the harrowing elephant attack in Kruger National Park, Sarah and Lovu and her fellow researchers found themselves on a path of recovery and reflection. The incident had left them physically scarred and emotionally shaken, but with a renewed determination to continue their vital conservation work. Once safely evacuated from the park, Sarah and her team were rushed to a nearby medical facility. Their injuries, though not life-threatening, required immediate attention. Bruises, lacerations, and the traumatic shock of the attack were etched into their beings, 
serving as haunting reminders of their close encounter with one of nature's most formidable forces. News of the incident had spread far and wide, capturing the global scientific communities and concerned conservationists' attention. Sarah's family, who had endured an agonizing wait for her safety, embraced her with relief and concern. They understood the risks inherent in her chosen path, but couldn't help but worry for her safety. As Sarah lay in her hospital bed recovering from her injuries, she couldn't escape her profound awe and respect for the elephants that had been her passion and peril. She knew that complex factors, including territorial disputes and the stress of a burgeoning population, had triggered the bull elephant's aggression. The incident prompted a broader conversation within Kruger National Park and the conservation community. Researchers and park authorities recognized the need for enhanced safety measures, more comprehensive training, and a deeper understanding of elephant behavior. The delicate balance between human observation and elephant preservation had been underscored by the events of that fateful day. Sarah's commitment to the cause remained unshaken. She and her fellow researchers were determined to continue their work armed with a newfound understanding of their challenges. The incident had only fueled their resolve to contribute to the preservation of these magnificent creatures in their natural habitats. Kruger National Park, a wildlife sanctuary and those who studied it, would forever bear the scars of that tumultuous encounter. The incident highlighted the complexities of human-wildlife coexistence, the urgent need for innovative solutions to protect endangered species, and the dedicated individuals striving to safeguard them. In the vast expanse of the Amazon rainforest, where nature's symphony echoed through towering trees and vibrant foliage, Julian, a spirited adventurer and passionate runner, found himself on the threshold of an unprecedented challenge. At the age of 27, he stood ready to tackle one of Brazil's most demanding ultra-marathons, a grueling test of endurance that would push him to his limits in the captivating wilderness. The Amazon rainforest unfolded before Julian like a living tapestry of emerald hues. In this untamed realm, the air was thick with mingling scents of damp earth and exotic blossoms. Towering trees, their leafy canopies reaching for the heavens, creating a mesmerizing dance of dappled sunlight that painted the forest floor in patches of golden radiance. Majestic rivers wound their way through the dense foliage, their waters teeming with secrets unknown. As Julian prepared for the challenge, he poured his heart and soul into thorough training. Every sinew of his body honed to perfection, his mind steeled with determination and he envisioned himself crossing the finish line with triumphant strides. The allure of victory burned within him, not merely for the prize money that awaited the winner, but for the radiant glory accompanying his name in the annals of the race's history. The initial days of the event passed uneventfully, and Julian's recorded time placed him among the top three participants. However, fatigue began to settle within his weary limbs and his left knee throbbed with pain from the fall he had suffered on the second day. Despite these obstacles, Julian knew he couldn't afford to rest if he wanted a chance at winning the race. On the fourth day, as Julian navigated through a particularly dense thicket, his tired body slipped on a treacherous slope. With a jolt, he tumbled awkwardly down the incline, landing at the bottom with an agonizing thud. The impact aggravated his already injured knee, intensifying the ache that radiated through his body. Knowing he needed to gather his strength, Julian reluctantly allowed himself a moment to rest. However, he resolved not to call for assistance or risk being disqualified from the race. Lying on the forest floor, he listened intently to the surrounding wilderness, hoping for a sign of solace amidst the disquiet. Suddenly, a faint growl reached Julian's ears, barely audible amidst the rustling leaves and distant wildlife calls. Alertness surged through his veins as he scanned the trees, searching for any lurking danger. His eyes darted from branch to branch, but he saw no immediate threat lurking in the shadows. Despite the absence of visible danger, an unshakable sense of foreboding settled upon Julian's mind like a dark cloud obscuring his thoughts. 
Trusting his instincts, he mustered the strength to push himself up, wincing with pain as he rose from his resting place. With each limping step, he endeavored to distance himself from the treacherous crevice, unaware that a stealthy predator had already set its sights on him. Julian's movements were slow and deliberate, every fiber of his being attuned to the hidden dangers lurking within the labyrinthine foliage. The once familiar sounds of the rainforest seemed to fade into a hushed silence, broken only by the steady rhythm of his labored breath. He cast anxious glances over his shoulder, his heart pounding, sensing that time was running out. As Julian turned away from his former location, his senses were suddenly assaulted by a deafening growl that reverberated through the air, emanating from the lofty treetops. It was too late before he could fully comprehend the danger that loomed above. In a blur of agility and power, a colossal jaguar, its muscular frame stretching over seven feet, launched itself at Julian, leaving him no time to react. The predator's attack was swift and merciless, a deadly precision ballet. With lightning speed, the jaguar honed in on its target, fixating its sights on Julian's vulnerable neck. In the blink of an eye, its fangs sank deep into his flesh, unleashing an excruciating pain that surged through Julian's body with unforgiving intensity. The agony robbed Julian of his voice, stifling any attempt to cry for help. His wide eyes mirrored his terror as he witnessed the jaguar's vicious assault, feeling his lifeblood seep from the wounds inflicted by the predator's razor-sharp teeth. Blood spurted forth as Julian's jugular vein was pierced in the fierce attack. Helplessly, Julian's gaze fixed upon the beast that had become his tormentor. His horrified eyes met the gaze of the jaguar, the life draining from him as the crimson fluid cascaded from his neck, spattering onto the face of his ferocious assailant. With a chilling finality, predator and prey crashed to the ground, locking in a fierce embrace. The jaguar, a symbol of primal dominance, continued to clutch Julian's broken body, its relentless grip firmly clasped around his neck. It appeared as if the jaguar patiently awaited the fading flicker of life, exhibiting a ruthless determination. Julian, driven by a sheer survival instinct, summoned a final burst of futile resistance, futilely flailing his weakening limbs in a desperate attempt to fight back against the overwhelming force of his attacker. Yet the predator's unyielding grip held fast, unrelenting in its determination. Julian's strength, drained by his injuries and the steady flow of blood loss, waned with each passing moment. The weight of exhaustion bore down upon his trembling arms, and his vision blurred as darkness encroached, a veil drawn by the merciless hands of fate. And then, as his consciousness slipped away, Julian was engulfed by an abyss of obscurity. Once vibrant and fierce, the struggle for life succumbed to the relentless power of the jaguar, leaving only a chilling silence amidst the verdant depths of the Amazon rainforest. Following its ruthless victory, the jaguar wasted no time in satiating its ravenous appetite. It descended upon the lifeless body of Julian, tearing through flesh and sinew with savage precision. Limb by limb, the predator voraciously devoured the mangled remains of the once vibrant jogger, ripping him apart in a macabre feast. Meanwhile, back at the race checkpoint, a growing sense of unease settled upon the race committee. Hours had passed and there was no sign of Julian's arrival. Concern etched upon their faces, they swiftly realized something was gravely amiss. Without hesitation, an urgent search and rescue team was mobilized, equipped with the race's GPS tracker to locate the missing participant. With unwavering determination, the search party combed through the labyrinthine wilderness, their hearts heavy with trepidation. It didn't take long for their efforts to bear fruit as they stumbled upon the horrifying scene that unfolded before them. The grass-covered ground was a crimson canvas painted with Julian's mutilated and mangled carcass. His lifeless form lay sprawled upon the earth, surrounded by a blanket of his own blood. 
gruesome evidence of his violent demise, with several limbs and body parts brutally torn asunder. News of the ghastly incident spread like wildfire, igniting shock and horror among the racing community and beyond. The gravity of the situation necessitated an immediate decision, and the race committee canceled the event. The once thriving competition, filled with anticipation of triumph and camaraderie, was overshadowed by the tragic loss and brutality unfolding within the depths of the rainforest. David Thornton, a seasoned veterinarian specializing in exotic animals, had journeyed deep into the heart of Selvis National Reserve, Tanzania, a haven for diverse wildlife. His purpose was clear, providing much needed medical support for the resident cheetahs at a renowned conservation center within the reserve. The African sun beat down relentlessly as David and his team prepared for the day's tasks, the anticipation of the work ahead blending with the sounds of the savanna. The conservation center was a haven for cheetahs rescued from various threats, from poaching to habitat loss. David was acutely aware of these big cats' magnificent yet unpredictable nature as he entered the enclosure for his routine health checks. The enclosure was designed to keep the cheetahs and the caregivers safe, with sturdy chain-link fencing and barbed wire topping the walls. It was a sanctuary where these vulnerable creatures could heal and thrive, thanks to the dedicated efforts of the center staff. As David stepped further into the enclosure, the captivating beauty of the cheetahs was undeniable. However, he always considered the potential dangers that could arise when interacting with these wild animals, even within the confines of the conservation center's secure boundaries. David cautiously approached one of the cheetahs, his trained eyes scanning for any signs of distress or illness. The cheetah in question, a sleek and muscular specimen named Malaika, lay in the shade, her amber eyes watching his every move with curiosity and caution. David's years of experience had taught him the importance of reading animal body language, and he proceeded with deliberate care. As he conducted his examination, David couldn't help but marvel at the grace and power of these animals. Cheetahs, the fastest land animals on Earth, were a testament to the raw beauty of the natural world. He noted Malaika's vital signs, weight, and coat condition, all essential components of her overall health assessment. However, something unexpected happened as David reached out to check Malaika's teeth. A low growl rumbled in the cheetah's throat, her ears flattened against her skull. In an instant, the situation had shifted from routine to potentially dangerous. David's heart raced, but his training kicked in. He withdrew his hand slowly, maintaining eye contact with Malaika, but avoiding any direct challenge. Her growl intensified and her body tensed. She clearly perceived him as a threat, though David had done nothing to provoke her. With a sudden and lightning-fast movement, Malaika lunged toward David, her claws unsheathed. The world seemed to blur as adrenaline surged through David's veins. Instinctively, he leaped backward away from the charging cheetah. In that heart-pounding moment, time hung suspended. The grace and fury of the cheetah juxtaposed with David's desperate bid for escape as the scorching African sun bore witness to their clash in the unforgiving savanna. In that split second, David's body sailed through the air, and he felt a searing pain in his side as he collided with the enclosure's chain-link fence. But the barbed wire that topped the fence proved to be a lifesaver. In a desperate bid for escape, David managed to grasp the wire, his fingers gripping it tightly as he pulled himself upward. Malaika, unable to breach the barrier, let out a frustrated snarl. She paced back and forth, her eyes locked onto David, who was now perched precariously on the fence. Blood trickled from the wound on his side, but adrenaline had dulled the pain. Watching in horror from outside the enclosure, his team called for help. David's breath came in ragged gasps as he balanced on the wire. He knew that his life hung in the balance. The sun bore down on him, intensifying the sweltering heat. He could feel Malaika's eyes boring into him, her predatory instincts on high alert. Time seemed to stretch as David's team rushed to his aid. They managed to distract Malaika with a coordinated effort, drawing her attention away from the wounded veterinarian. As she bounded toward them, the team swiftly coordinated their efforts. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, they positioned themselves strategically and prepared to deploy tranquilizer darts. With utmost caution, they aimed to create a safe distance between Malaika and David, while prioritizing the cheetah's well-being and their wounded colleague. In that precious moment, David managed to lower himself from the fence, his trembling legs barely supporting his weight. 
His colleagues rushed to his side, providing much needed medical attention to his side wound. The relief that washed over him was immeasurable, but the encounter had left an indelible mark. As the days passed and David recovered from his injuries, he couldn't help but reflect on the delicate balance between caring for captive animals and respecting their wild instincts. Malika's attack had been a stark reminder that these majestic creatures retained their primal instincts even in captivity. The incident sparked a thorough review of safety protocols at the conservation center, with a renewed emphasis on minimizing human interaction with the cheetahs. David, despite his ordeal, remained dedicated to his work. His passion for the well-being of exotic animals burned brighter than ever, tempered by the lessons learned in the unforgiving embrace of the African savanna. His determination to heal and protect these magnificent creatures remained unshaken. It was a testament to the enduring bond between humans and the wild, a bond that transcended the scars and dangers, continuing to inspire others to safeguard the beauty and biodiversity of our natural world. Gemma is a famous YouTube personality known for her paranormal adventures and scary supernatural encounters. She goes to haunted, abandoned, or spooky places to discover whether supernatural beings are real and prove them with footage. For her newest scary adventure, she decides to feature the Appalachian Mountains and its never-ending saga of folklore and legends. Her recent goal was common, to find out whether Bigfoot is real. She arrived at the Appalachian Mountains with other explorers Paxton and Gracie, who will accompany her for a three-day trip to prove that Bigfoot exists. After hiking for hours, the three arrived at an abandoned cabin in the woods and decided they should stay there for the rest of their trip. It's also an excellent place to camp since it's in the middle of the forest and it's even more possible to spot a potential supernatural being in a spot like that. On the first day of their trip, Gemma, Paxton, and Gracie explored the woods in daylight while recording all their exploration on the footage. So far, there were no signs of any strange supernatural beings. After hours and hours of exploring, they returned to their cabin at night and decided to end their video. The three have discussed whether they should go at night in hopes of finding more evidence or save all their plans for tomorrow. Gemma decided they should all get some rest as they would be exploring tomorrow at both daylight and night for tomorrow's footage to gather more evidence and explore the woods even further. After the discussion, the three of them drifted off to sleep. Paxton and Gracie immediately fell asleep while Gemma was bothered by the sound of the cabin door creaking open. The cabin door is slightly faulty and opens even with a bit of wind blowing against it and it makes a sound when it creaks open. That's why Gemma couldn't fall asleep as the door was getting loud. Suddenly, heavy footsteps could be felt against the cabin's wooden floor. Paxton and Gracie were still asleep while Gemma stood up to find out what it was. Since there's only an emergency light providing light in their cabin, Gemma had a hard time recognizing who or what this creature is. The footsteps became heavier, indicating that it was fast approaching. Gemma tiptoed to her bag to grab her camera to try and record everything. She believes that this creature is Bigfoot, given that its footsteps are heavy and its figure is enormous. As Gemma was recording on her camera, she found it hard to determine what type of creature it was, especially that it's black and was breathing heavily. Gemma wants the animal to show itself, so she thinks of a way to disturb it. Gemma shouts at the creature, waking up Paxton and Gracie. Gemma signaled the two that they shouldn't make any other movements since there was a creature inside the cabin that she couldn't identify. The two remained seated on the floor as Gemma shouted at the beast again. The creature stopped walking for a moment, staring directly at Gemma in the dark. Gemma shouted again, but the beast charged at her and tackled her down to the wooden floor, inducing panic in Paxton and Gracie. As Gemma looked at the creature, it was not Bigfoot, but a giant black bear, unusually massive. Gemma screams at Paxton and Gracie that it's a black bear, which terrifies them. The bear started to claw Gemma's face, arms, torso, and lower body, as she struggled to get out of its grip. Paxton and Gracie tried to throw their bags at the bear, but they got clawed and scratched by the aggressive animal. The black bear continued to attack Gemma, and Gemma's camera fell to the floor and was nowhere to be seen now. 
Paxton and Gracie began shouting at the bear, making other loud noises by stomping on the wooden floor to scare the bear away. The bear growled loudly as it tried to bite Gemma's arm, causing her to scream. Paxton tried to smash things on the bear's head, but always got scratched until Gracie grabs a flare gun from her bag. Without hesitation, Gracie fired the flare gun at the cabin's chimney, which made the bear flinch. She stomped on the floor to scare the bear even more until it decided to run away back into the woods. Gemma was left severely wounded and unconscious. Even though it was late at night, Paxton and Gracie decided to hike back to their vehicle to take Gemma to the nearest hospital. Gemma survived the attack, but had to stay for a long time in the hospital to recover. She decided to close her channel in the meantime, as she will not be doing any videos until she's fully healed. If pet chimpanzees were to be feared for their aggressiveness, wild chimpanzees are sometimes no different from them. Wild chimps may seem to avoid contact or be docile with other humans, but their behavior is almost unpredictable and you almost couldn't guess their next move. This next story proves how this behavior works and how dangerous it can be. The sun was beating down on Lola's back as she trekked through the dense rainforest of Gabon. She was accompanied by her colleagues Camille and Hayes, who were fellow scientists. They were there to study the behavior of chimpanzees, one of the closest relatives of humans in the animal kingdom. Lola was a dedicated scientist with a passion for animal behavior. Her work had taken her to some of the most remote and beautiful places on Earth. But the jungles of Gabon were proving to be her most challenging yet. As they made their way through the dense undergrowth, the team spotted a group of chimpanzees in the distance. Lola was ecstatic at seeing them and urged her colleagues to approach them. But Camille and Hayes were more cautious, reminding her that chimpanzees were wild animals and could be dangerous. However, Lola was determined to get a closer look at the chimpanzees, despite the warnings of her colleagues. She approached them slowly, holding out a hand in friendship. The chimpanzees seemed to take this as a sign of aggression and began to growl and bare their teeth. Suddenly, one of the chimpanzees lunged forward and grabbed Lola's arm, pulling her towards it. The other chimpanzees joined in the attack, biting and scratching at her. Lola screamed in terror as Camille and Hayes attempted to intervene and chase the chimpanzees away. However, the chimpanzees grew more aggressive and tried to attack Camille and Hayes, causing them to step back and hopelessly watch Lola brutally mauled by three chimpanzees. Lola screamed for help as she tried to push the chimpanzees and fight back, but the three chimps were too strong. They easily overpowered Lola despite their smaller size. Camille and Hayes picked up nearby stones and threw them at the chimpanzees, causing them to grow more aggressive yet threatened at the same time. When the two scientists figured out this worked, they continued throwing more stones at the chimpanzees as Lola was still fighting to free herself from the vicious animals. She could already feel herself getting worn out and exhausted, but she continued despite getting bloodied all over. After minutes of trying to fight back the chimpanzees, they finally ran away from the three scientists, leaving Lola bloodied and traumatized. The attack was brutal, and Lola was left with multiple injuries. Her arm was badly broken, and she had deep cuts and bruises all over her body. Camille and Hayes quickly tended her wounds and called for help. It took several hours for a rescue team to arrive, and Lola was in excruciating pain by that time. Despite the severity of her injuries, Lola was lucky to have survived the attack. She spent several months in the hospital, undergoing surgeries and intense physiotherapy to regain the use of her arm. But the physical injuries were only the beginning of her troubles. The attack had left Lola deeply traumatized. She had nightmares and flashbacks of the attack, and her fear of chimpanzees had turned into a phobia. The once confident and outgoing scientist was now anxious and withdrawn. Lola's colleagues and family were concerned about her well-being and urged her to seek professional help. Initially, she was hesitant, but eventually she agreed to see a therapist. 
The therapy sessions were difficult, but they helped Lola process her trauma and regain control over her life. Over time, Lola began to recover from the attack. She returned to her work as a scientist, but was more cautious and mindful of the risks involved. She continued to study animal behavior, but did so with greater respect for the animals and their wild nature. The attack also taught Lola the importance of teamwork and collaboration. She had always been an independent thinker, but now she realized that working with her colleagues was essential for their safety and success. She became more communicative and open to feedback, and her relationships with her colleagues deepened. Today, Lola is still a scientist, but also an advocate for wildlife conservation and animal welfare. She shares her story with others, hoping to raise awareness about the dangers of approaching wild animals. She also promotes sustainable practices in wildlife research, ensuring that animals are respected and protected. In conclusion, Lola's story is a powerful reminder of the dangers of approaching wild animals and the importance of respecting their boundaries. Elizabeth Murray. Our next story takes us south of Montana to Wyoming, a state with over 4,000 lakes and excellent sights to see. Elizabeth Murray was a 26-year-old college graduate working at her local post office near Wilson, Montana. She intended to start with a few years of experience and then move to a bigger city for more profitable opportunities. In her spare time, she would often get together with her friends on weekends to visit neighboring towns and do whatever they wanted to relax, be it drinking, the circus, or sports. On April 13, 2007, while enjoying coffee with her friends Jackie and Albert, the latter proposed that they rent out some ATVs and take them up to Phillips Ridge for fun. The prospect sounded exciting, but Jackie and Elizabeth did not have the proper experience with ATVs to do that. Albert assured them that he could show them the basics and they could take all the time they wanted and that it was easier than they thought. They said that they would think about it. The next day, Albert asked them about it again, and Elizabeth said they had decided to try it out. Albert was overjoyed and told Elizabeth that he had already booked the ATVs on a hunch. Later in the day, Elizabeth made her way to the edge of town, where Jackie was already waiting for Albert. They both saw him coming from down the road on a single ATV, and they admitted among themselves that it did look fun. The two of them squeezed onto Albert's ATV as he took them up the ridge to the point where the other two were set. Albert dismounted and said that he would teach them the basics first. After some practice and a few mistakes, the girls quickly grasped the basics of ATV riding and were easily speeding across the ridge. Since they decided to take on the experience later than ideal, they figured they could stay on the ridge until nightfall and have some food. The trio zoomed across the pass on the ridge, relishing the rush of adrenaline and the thrill of speed as the hours flew by. Before they knew it, the sun had started to set and it got dark so they decided to take a few more laps before heading home. Tired and unfocused, Elizabeth veered off the track accidentally and hit the side of a large tree, sending her flying down a hill and into the underbrush, lost in stray branches and logs. Albert and Jackie immediately noticed her fall, sped to her location, parked the ATVs, and looked down the hill. Elizabeth had fallen approximately 50 yards down the steep hill. At the bottom of the hill, Elizabeth groggily tried to get up from the logs, but a tremendous pain shot through her leg as she realized it was broken above the knee. She screamed in pain, unable to move, pinned under the logs piled at the bottom of the hill. She had no way of freeing herself. Each movement she made caused her leg to shock her body with more pain. With no means of escape and daylight dwindling, she screamed for her friends to tell them where she was. They responded kindly, and Albert shouted for her to remain calm as they called for help. He handed his phone to Jackie, who called 911, and went in the direction of the town to bring them to Elizabeth. In the meantime, Albert decided to slowly scale down the hill and see if he could help his friend. Elizabeth sensed movement within the tangle of logs and saw a dark shape through the foliage. As it got closer, a smell intensified, 
and she could clearly see her visitor. It was a black bear. The beast wasn't as big as some as she had seen before, but it was still imposing and uncomfortably close. As the bear loomed closer, it started sniffing the logs inches away from Elizabeth's face. As it figured out that Elizabeth was a potential meal, it pushed the logs with its paws, but they just pressed on her more, adding to the pain in her leg. Thinking quickly, Elizabeth grabbed a sharp stick beside her and thrust it through the mass of logs directly into the bear's eye. It staggered back and roared, clawing at the logs and making some way to reach her. She screamed in retaliation and kept thrusting the stick into the bear, but it wasn't letting up. To her horror, the bear managed to push its paw through the wood and claw her across her broken leg. She shrieked as the bear's claws ground against her bone, gushing blood all over her leg. At the top of her pain, she heard some commotion from up the hill and realized it was her friends coming to her aid. Albert was accompanied by two paramedics and a police officer who spotted the bear first and swiftly shot it in the shoulder with a rifle. It struggled to pull its paw from the mass of logs, but managed and approached the rescue party. A second shot deterred the bear and scared it off, giving the crew the precious opportunity of getting to Elizabeth. Albert and two of the men made an effort to move some of the logs just enough for one of the paramedics to get through and tend to her leg. When he disinfected it and stopped the bleeding, they all started heaving the logs away. This was a long and painful ordeal for Elizabeth as she felt every weight shift on her mangled leg. This was made no better by the adrenaline in her system letting up and worsening the pain. Eventually, however, the group cleared the logs and carefully carried Elizabeth up the hill. She stabilized when they carried her to the waiting ambulance and was admitted to the nearest hospital. Her friends stayed with her and they profusely apologized for suggesting the ATVs and for staying out for so long. Elizabeth was understanding and did not blame her friends in the slightest. However, she did vow never to sit on an ATV again. The vast Umoya Wildlife Reserve lay in the heart of the untamed African wilderness, surrounded by sprawling savannas and dense jungles. The place, with its unparalleled natural beauty and the vast array of majestic creatures, concealed wonders and beauties that wreaked havoc beyond its borders. John and Lovu, a seasoned South African park ranger with his weathered features and eyes gleaming with the wisdom of the wild, had heard the cries of the villagers. The elephants originating from Umoya had embarked on a daring expedition as they ventured out into the surrounding areas, wreaking havoc on the crops and leaving behind a devastating path of destruction. Determined to quell the escalating conflict, John, with unwavering resolve, embarked on his mission as the first rays of sunlight painted the sky in vibrant hues. The year 1998 marked a significant period in history where the untamed wilderness reigned supreme over the vast expanse of land. The Land Rover driven by John rumbled down dusty trails, skillfully weaving through tall grasses that swayed like golden sentinels in the wind. The scent of earth and life permeated the charged air, creating an atmosphere alive with anticipation. In the distance, the calls of birds echoed through the surroundings, their melodic symphony serving as a testament to the grandeur of nature. Approaching the outskirts of the reserve, John beheld a sight that filled him with a mixture of awe and trepidation. The fence, which served as a barrier separating man from nature, was found lying broken and twisted on the ground, resembling a defeated sentinel. Propelled by an inexplicable force, the elephants had clearly breached their sanctuary. John ventured forth with measured steps to inspect the extent of the damage. Crouching down, he carefully studied the snapped wires and torn posts which stood as a testament to the sheer power possessed by these behemoths. As he found himself lost in thought, a seismic presence suddenly reverberated through the earth, capturing his attention and causing him to snap out of his contemplative state. A colossal elephant emerged from the thicket, its hide weathered countless journeys through the savanna. A matriarch stood before them, her eyes bearing the wisdom of generations. For a brief moment, John and the elephant engaged in a captivating gaze, as if two guardians fiercely protecting their domains. A trumpet of warning shattered the silence. The elephant felt the intrusion, 
as her territory was violated. In an instant, a charge was initiated by her as she became a force of nature propelled by millennia of survival instincts. John's heart raced, his body propelled forward in a sprint towards his Land Rover. Adrenaline surged through his veins, intensifying his every movement. The engine came alive with a thunderous roar, embodying a metallic beast that eagerly responded to the call of its master. The Land Rover surged forward, its powerful engine propelling it with great force and leaving a billowing cloud of dust in its wake. Yet the elephant continued to pursue, displaying an unwavering determination that refused to be swayed by any obstacle in her path. The chase continued to dance on as man and beast engaged in a primal struggle. Just as the hot breath of the elephant brushed against John's back, he swiftly veered, narrowly escaping the wrath of the mighty creature. With their hearts pounding, they found themselves standing at an impasse, where both individuals respected the tenacity displayed by the other. At that moment, they shared a silent understanding as a recognition of the untamed spirit within each of them passed between them. Gathering reinforcements, John returned to the breach in the fence, determined to fix it and ensure the security of the area. Together with their fellow rangers, they labored tirelessly under the scorching sun, diligently repairing the divide that had posed a looming threat of escalating the conflict. He carefully weaved the wires, symbolizing man's resilience in the face of nature's mighty forces. As they secured the last strand, a wave of triumph washed over them. The village beyond the reserve had been secured, ensuring it would remain protected from future incursions. With hands marked by the Earth's embrace, John gazes across the vast expanse, fully aware that this moment represents merely one chapter in the eternal dance between man and the untamed wilderness. The Umoya Wildlife Reserve, with its towering presence, stood tall as a testament to the enduring urge of the untamed. Within its expansive boundaries, a sanctuary emerged where the harmonious coexistence of nature and humanity found their rightful place in the intricate tapestry of life. John and Lovu, the South African park ranger, would forever bear witness to the boundless power and beauty that defined his homeland. His homeland's boundless power and beauty would be forever etched in John and Lovu's memory as he fulfilled his South African park ranger duties. Days transformed into weeks, and the harmonious cadence of life in Umoya resumed its rhythmic flow. The villagers who had once been besieged by fear were now working the land with newfound vigor. They were grateful for the shield that had been forged, as it had provided them with a renewed sense of security and protection. Yet, it was clear to John that the encounter of the elephant held a wonder. The wind shifted, subtly altering the delicate balance of nature. John sensed it as they observed how the animals moved with a heightened awareness, their senses attuned to the subtlest of cues. The whispering of leaves carried by a gentle breeze reached their ears, further confirming their intuition. Even the distant call of predators echoing through the wilderness confirmed their perception. The land teemed with secrets, and he possessed an unwavering determination to unearth them. On one fateful morning, the horizon was adorned with hues of gold and crimson as the sun began to rise. During this picturesque moment, John, filled with a sense of adventure, embarked on an expedition all by himself. Armed with a relentless sense of purpose and an extensive knowledge of the wild, he fearlessly ventured deeper into the heart of Umoya than he had ever dared. The anticipation hung heavy in the air as if it were tangible, causing the forest to come alive with a multitude of hidden wonders. With an innate grace, John moved gracefully as his footsteps were guided by his hand. Navigating through tangled underbrush and skirting the edges of ancient watering holes, he felt the heartbeat of the land beneath his boots. As he ventured further into the wilderness, the signs of the elephant's passage became increasingly evident. Massive footprints were imprinted on the earth, as if a colossal force had left its mark upon the land. Broken branches littered the ground, evidence of a powerful presence that had passed through. In the distance, the echo of rumbling could be heard, a reminder of the immense energy that had recently been unleashed. He could feel himself drawing closer to something profound, a revelation that would resonate through the ages. Suddenly, a hushed silence fell over the forest. The very air held its breath as if anticipating something extraordinary. And then, the elephant emerged once more, making her way through the dappled shadows. John felt the weight of knowledge transcending time as her piercing gaze bore into his eyes. In this instance, any charges or threats were absent. The truth that had eluded him for so long became clear at that moment. 
The elephants were not marauding invaders. They fulfilled their role as guardians of the untamed landscapes. With newfound reverence, John's body inclined in a graceful bow towards the matriarch, showcasing his deep respect for the ancient alliance that had long endured between man and nature. Turning to leave, he carried a truth that would forever shape his destiny. The encounter that John had spread rapidly among other rangers throughout Umoya, intertwining itself seamlessly into the intricate tapestry of what he did. The message of the elephant echoed through the ages, serving as a constant reminder that threads of destiny inexorably bound together the wild and the civilized. The Umoya Wildlife Reserve stood proudly, serving as a sanctuary for various creatures adorned with fur and feathers. It provided a haven for these magnificent beings and a powerful testament to the steadfast spirit of unity that resonated within its core.